Welcome to Digital Church from the East Solent and Downs Methodist Circuit in Southern England. We're really pleased you've joined us for this act of worship. We do like to hear from you as well, so do be in touch and details of how to do that will be on the screen at the end of the service. Let's begin in prayer before we sing. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is that prayer for the life of the church, O breath of life, come sweeping through us, revive your church with life and power. continue in prayers of praise and of confession. Jesus said, Receive the Spirit. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the gospel we proclaim. Declare God's glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We dwell in him and he in us. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvellous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is 
and is to come. Holy Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to your truth, strengthen us to do your will, and give us the joy of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining, and whose power we cannot comprehend, Show us your glory as far as we can grasp it, and shield us from knowing more than we can bear, until we may look upon you without fear, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Our second hymn is that summary and that commitment to our part in the covenant, the working with God in this world. Come. Yet us, let us use the grace divine, and all with one accord, in a perpetual covenant, join ourselves to Christ the Lord. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, 
Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Thanks be to God. You might know if you've seen and heard me before on Digital Church, or if you've seen and heard me in a church in person, that I'm fond of saying that the most important tool for biblical interpretation is context. So it's important to ask today, what comes before Luke chapter 10? Again, if you've been in a church where I've preached regularly, you'll now be shouting at the screen saying, Luke chapter 9! Quite right. And it is significant and helpful that what we've read from Luke chapter 10 does come just after what is at the end of Luke chapter 9. Remember that Luke didn't put in the chapter divisions. They are there for our convenience in finding different passages, not in order to divide up the text into separate episodes. The Lord appointed 70 and sent them on ahead. Sent them on ahead? That sounds as though he had a route in mind. If we glanced back into chapter 9, we'd see that Jesus had resolutely set out for Jerusalem. This is a pivotal point in Luke's Gospel, where after his ministry in Galilee, he sets out for Jerusalem. The last events of chapter 9 have been Jesus's response to three potential followers. To one, Jesus pointed out that his itinerant lifestyle would not necessarily be comfortable. Jesus told another that he should proclaim the kingdom of God rather than go back to attend his father's funeral. Rather cryptically, Jesus told the third that no one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. He said that because the man wanted to go and say farewell to those at home. There are themes in those encounters which run into this account of Jesus sending 70 others ahead of him. Jesus gave them instructions that sum up a simple itinerant lifestyle that expresses a dependence on God for provision, provision of everything beyond, or even perhaps including, the most immediate basic necessities. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. Similarly, they were not to shop around for the cheapest Airbnb. They were to accept hospitality in the first house where it was offered. Accommodation was not being claimed on expenses. 
if it wasn't offered, they were to move on elsewhere. But you've probably noticed that I've left out the main theme that overlaps from chapter 9 into chapter 10. In chapter 9 verse 60, Jesus told the man who wanted to go back to his father's funeral that he should go and proclaim the kingdom of God. In chapter 9 verse 62, Jesus told the man who wanted to go and say farewell to those at home that no one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. His instructions to the 70 who are sent ahead of him are that they go in peace, they are to heal the sick where they are welcomed, and whether they are welcomed or not, the message is, the kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God. So what's this kingdom of God? The kingdom of God could be said to be Jesus' favourite subject. And this is not the only part of the Gospels where Jesus mentions the kingdom of God a number of times within a few verses. He told parables to describe it. He talked about it directly and he healed people to show what it is like. The kingdom of God is not so much a geographically defined place like the United Kingdom. The kingdom of God is wherever God's rule operates. Wherever God is king, that means it's not so much geographical as personal. The kingdom of God is wherever people are who are obedient to God and who follow his ways. Jesus gave a very concise summary in his instructions to those 70 who went ahead of him on his route to Jerusalem. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. When you are welcomed, accept hospitality, heal those who are ill. So the kingdom of God comes in peace. The kingdom of God builds relationships, takes time over people. The kingdom of God brings wholeness of being. That's why they're able to say those to those who welcome them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But the kingdom of God is not dependent for its presence on the welcome and acceptance of those whom God's people meet. If they're not welcomed, they're still to say, the kingdom of God has come near. The somewhat awesome responsibility and task that we have is to embody the kingdom of God wherever we go, and whether or not it is received and welcomed, and also not to impose it on anyone. If we're not welcomed as bearers of the kingdom, then we move on. Let people know that the kingdom of God has come near, but we move on. If we are welcomed, perhaps the task is even more awesome, in that we are to be people of peace, we are to take time over building relationships. We are to do all in our power to make people whole, to care for their complete well-being in body, mind and spirit. And when we see that that happens, to rejoice not so much in how great we are at doing that, but that we are part of the Kingdom of God. Something of what that looks like in practice we'll look at next week as we look at one of Jesus's most famous stories. But now we'll sing of our commitment to embody the kingdom in our service of one another. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you.
And so we come to our prayers of intercession. We come before God who loves us, calls us into his community and sends us in his service. God who calls and sends, we pray for the community of your people, the church. May we be a place of welcome for all, a place of spiritual nurture and a place of encounter with you. Use us, Lord, to build your kingdom. God of heaven and earth, we pray for the nations of the world, for all in positions of power, influence and authority, that they would lead with wisdom, uphold the ways of your kingdom and work for justice, reconciliation, peace and cooperation. Use us, Lord, to build your kingdom. God of love and companionship, we pray for our families and friends, for all the communities of which we are a part. Especially we pray for those who do not know you, through their relationships with us, through our words and actions, may they come to know more of you, to share in the joy of new life in you, to know that your kingdom has come near. Use us, Lord, to build your kingdom. God of compassion and wholeness, we pray for all suffering in body, mind or spirit, for the lonely, the confused, the marginalised and those who care for them. Give them patience and comfort, knowledge of your presence and your healing touch. May they know that the kingdom comes near. We remember those whom we have known and loved who have died and we pray for those who mourn that they would know your presence and your love. Use us, Lord, to build your kingdom. We draw our prayers together in the prayer for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is a hymn of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is justice and joy, mercy and grace, challenge and choice.
And finally, we ask God's blessing on us. The Father whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. The Son who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us and those we love and all for whom we pray, today and always. Amen. Glory to God, whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus for ever and ever. Amen. We do thank you for joining us for this act of worship and as I said at the beginning we do like to hear from you so do be in touch and ways of doing that will be on the screen shortly. I hope to see you next week when we'll be looking at one of Jesus's most famous stories. Thank you.